Hello friends, welcome to today's video. It's gonna be a little bit of a chit chatty one, so grab a coffee, a tea, and a snack. Let's sit down and hang out. Today we're talking how to stay positive and motivated as a mom. I feel like that on its own is just such a struggle. Motherhood can be so overwhelming, lonely, exhausting. It can also be beautiful, but I'm pretty sure if you're watching this right now, you probably know what I mean by it can be overwhelming at times and stressful. So these are ways that I have found very helpful to help me with each situation that I'll be talking about here, how to get motivated and kind of change that thought to just make life a whole lot easier for you and your family. I feel like one of the biggest things that overwhelms us as moms, or in my case especially, is the house. Cleaning, oh my goodness, the house is a mess, you clean it, you turn around and it's a mess again, right? And it can be so overwhelming trying to keep it clean all day, you just kind of give up and then your house gets chaotic and overwhelming. I am someone that gets very stressed out if my house is messy and I kind of spend my whole day cleaning just for it to get messy again the next day. Let's talk about what works for me to make the cleaning of my house and the mess less overwhelming. Of course, things like decluttering and just having less stuff does help as well, but maybe that's not an option for you right now and you're just needing something quick and easy. One thing I love to do is setting a timer for 10 or 15 minutes, let's say we're done with dinner, I set my timer and I quickly tidy the kitchen. I do clean the kitchen after each meal, so three times a day at least I will clean the kitchen, but at that point I'm only cleaning the kitchen for five to 10 minutes and that's it. So setting a timer is a great way to do it. In fact, that is why I make sure all of my motivating clean with me videos that I post here on my channel are also 10 to 15 minutes long. So that serves as your timer and that way you have just that chunk of time to do that task Take a break after, take a breather and come back to it later. When it comes to things like deep cleaning and overwhelming tasks, in the past I have taken days where today I'm gonna deep clean and I go crazy and it's very overwhelming. So what I'd like to do instead is prioritize my tasks. Each day I pick maybe one, max two things that I absolutely need to do on my priority list. That could be something as simple as cleaning the toilet in the bathroom, cleaning the oven today, or maybe calling the doctor to make a doctor's appointment for the kids. Whatever it is, that is the top priority on my list that I need to get done. And whatever else is on my to-do list just kind of falls after. If I don't get the rest done, that's fine. We'll move it to another day. But at least the top priority on my list is done. And that's how I'm able to get a lot of deep cleaning done, like the bathroom and different things in the kitchen that should be cleaned, you know, on a semi-monthly kind of regular basis. So that is a great way to do it and not make it overwhelming. Along with that, I love to make lists. I am a list writer, so I just like to do my to-do list and check them off and I find that really motivating and satisfying. I also make sure to put it in my phone, just on my calendars app. I also use a cheap dollar store planner to plan out my days so I'm able to see, okay, my daughter has gymnastics today, but I also need to make sure I clean the bathroom this week and just those types of things. So that's really helpful to do it that way and then it's just one small task on your list instead of all of these huge ones that you feel like you need to get done in one day. I'm gonna say it. Waking up before your kids is wonderful. I don't do it right now. I have an eight-month-old who wakes up many times throughout the night to nurse, so I sleep until the kids wake me up. And let me tell you, I'm very grumpy when I wake up in the morning because of it. Do I favor my sleep over that? Yes, at this point in time, I do. But before I had my eight-month-old, and I just had my toddler, I would wake up before her a little bit and then I was able to, you know, make a cup of coffee, sit on the couch, browse on my phone, and that way when she woke up, I was already in a good mood and happy and it was just a lot better of a day for everyone. Like I said, at this point in my life, that's not an option, so if that's not an option for you, that's okay. Skip on to the next step. But if you are able to wake up a little bit before your kids to get ready for work, I used to love doing that when I would go to work doing my makeup and everything before, I would get everything prepared and then go wake up my kids and get them ready for the day. So that is a great option as well if you are a working mom to just get things done and be motivated because you don't have the kids like, mom, I need a snack, mom, I'm hungry, while you're trying to get ready for work. You can tell I'm a mom with my very animated conversation, right? Sorry, it's, it's the mom and me. <laughs> Something I totally forgot to mention about cleaning is going to bed with a clean kitchen and living room. Those are my two musts. If I can, I like to tidy up my bathroom too. And I don't mean clean as in scrubbing the toilet. I mean just tidy. Clean off the counters, make sure the dishes aren't in the sink, leave them to dry overnight, that's fine. But no dirty dishes in the sink. 
maybe tidy up the toys in the living room a little bit, you know, throw them back in the toy bucket to get destroyed in the morning again. But coming out in the morning to a fresh and clean space does so much for your mental health and really is a good way to start off your day. So I highly recommend if you take anything off of that list, something like that. I know it takes about 10 to 15 minutes at night and that kind of sounds like a lot sometimes, but I promise you that 10 to 15 minutes every night will make a world of a difference the next day when you wake up. Guarantee it. I do like to get ready for the day even if I'm not going out and that doesn't mean doing a full face of makeup because most days, I'm going to be honest with you, I have my week old mom bun that's been dry shampooed and just like everywhere that I haven't touched up and been able to brush in like seven days. So don't worry, that's mostly me, I had a shower today, you're welcome. But. I do like to get dressed at least, not just wear my underwear around the house all day, though that would be great. It doesn't help my mood. Today, for example, I did a five minute makeup. I threw on some concealer because I have some, some big luggage size bags from the baby being up all night. Some mascara, eyeliner, you're good to go. So no, you don't need to wear makeup or have your hair down because trust me, by the end of the day, it'll be back up again. But making sure you just get somewhat ready for the day, throw on some clothes or something, and it just makes you feel so much better. Even if it's just a pair of leggings, like me. <laughs> I feel like as moms, we can get very busy and caught up in taking care of the kids, feeding the kids, doing everything around the house. We kind of forget to feed ourselves and give ourselves water. So it's really important to be making sure you're actually eating meals if you're nursing like me as well, but if not, you still need energy to get through the day and be a mom. So making sure you're feeding yourself and drinking your water, your coffee, whatever it is. If you have to reheat your coffee in the microwave 10 times like me each day, that's fine. But making sure you are taking care of yourself as well. I know a lot of moms are really into exercising and that's amazing. I feel like moving your body is so important. I personally have never been to the gym. It's not my thing, but I still get my body moving. I will take the kids on a nature walk or maybe a walk around the neighborhood, a walk to the park. And this way we get some fresh air, which really helps improve your mood. And I'm able to get my body moving, which always feels really good. A really fun way if it's a little bit cold out or winter time, or maybe it's too hot where you live to go out, is having a little dance party with the kids. Sometimes it is Frozen themed and Disney themed and I'm dancing to Elsa and I'm getting my body moving and it feels good and you kind of have to fake it until you make it. I know that can be frustrating and maybe you're not in the best mood, but I'm going to be honest with you, I fake it until I make it every day. I wake up super grumpy, I am not a morning person, and I just have to fake it for my kids and be like, yay, the morning. And then by the lunchtime, like now it's 12.30, I'm good to go for the day. You see my mood right now? And that's just because I faked it until I made it happen. Granted, I'm sipping on my coffee now, eight hours into my day, but hey, that's fine, it's going good so far. Now let's talk about some great ways that I'm able to really help boost my positivity and my motivation throughout the day. Speaking positive affirmations is really helpful for me. I personally have been struggling with some postpartum stuff on the side, so these positive affirmations and just telling myself when I'm having a really hard time, like, you're okay, you're fine, you can do this, that makes a big difference for me. So maybe try doing something like that and that might help you out in those really stressful times when you're not wanting to lose your mind on your kids. Just take a breath and give yourself some positive affirmations. You are an incredible mom and I guarantee you, you you're doing a wonderful job even if that mom guilt is telling you that you're not. Surrounding yourself with positive and uplifting people is so important. Social media can be overwhelming with the picture perfect way to be a mom and it can make you feel really guilty. The mom guilt is bad enough already without that. So I'm gonna be honest with you, my kitchen around, here and here, it's not clean, I'll show you, okay? I'm telling you this to tell you that social media is not what it seems, shocker, I know. It's really hard not to compare ourselves to others, especially moms. What I do is I just unfollow them. I know maybe you like seeing their pretty decor, but if it's making you feel bad about yourself or you as a mom, it's not worth it. So surrounding yourself by positive and uplifting content and people is so important to help your mood. Asking for support is not something to be ashamed of. Asking family and friends for help. I personally see a counselor or a therapist, and that's not to say that you need to go to counseling or therapy, but that's something that helps me with my struggles in my life and my postpartum stuff, and it's really helpful. So asking for help when you need it is something that you shouldn't be ashamed of, and I know it can be really hard because especially for me, it's something I struggle with, 
but it's so important to reach out when you need it. Time for yourself is a big one. I feel like a lot of us have that internal battle of getting the kids to sleep and then should I go to sleep early and get that good sleep or should I stay up and get some me time finally? What do I do? And it's just like a back and forth thing and in the morning you're never satisfied because you either didn't get enough sleep or you didn't get the me time or both. So how do you balance that? I mean, there isn't an exact way that I would say works for everybody, but for me, I kind of assess what I need. So if I really need to rest, I'll stay up a little bit, maybe half an hour or an hour, make a cup of tea, just relax on my phone, and then I'll go to bed around 9.30. Otherwise, if I'm editing like my videos tonight, for example, I'll probably stay up till about 11 and I kind of cut it off there at the bedtime of 11 o'clock. Otherwise, I'm too exhausted from being up feeding the baby all night. But me time is so important and I know for a lot of us, it's not an option. I don't have someone who can just take the kids for me so I can have a bath. And I don't have someone to take the kids for me so I can run to the grocery shop, which doesn't count as me time, by the way. Do something that makes you happy and that you enjoy. I know your kids make you happy. I know you enjoy your kids and you love them, but what is something besides your kids that you enjoy? You were someone else before you were a mom. You're not just a mom. When people ask, you know, describe yourself, I say I'm a mom, I'm a wife. You're not just a wife. You're not just a mom. You were someone before all of that. Who are you? Maybe you're like me and you're a totally different person than you used to be. I became a mom at 20 years old and I'm a very different person than when I became a mom. I'm a better person now that I am a mom, but who am I now? And I feel like a lot of us can lose ourselves to motherhood, which is a really scary time to go through. And you are not alone in that, trust me. The way that I have been helping myself to get through that kind of rut of not knowing who I am and what I want is finding what I enjoy and what brings me peace and happiness. Focusing on pockets of peace throughout my day, what do I like to do? Do I like to craft music, create content for other people, have a supportive community online? Do I like to be social? I don't, I'm anti-social. <laughs> do I like to play sports? What do I enjoy doing? And making sure that I'm making time for that if I can. I know it's so hard, especially during a pandemic, you can't get a babysitter, you know, who's gonna take your kids? I know it's hard. You're thinking of all of these ways to not let it happen. But let's try our best to find even half an hour every few weeks to be able to make that craft or sit down and film a video right now during nap time. I know maybe right now I'm procrastinating cleaning my kitchen, but hey, I'm getting something done that I enjoy. And this is how you find yourself, what you love, and who you are. That's honestly what helps me so much to get motivated and keep me going through mom life. It can be really scary sometimes, and it can be really amazing and rewarding and motherhood has its ups and downs. And I'm really sorry if you're going through a hard time right now. It doesn't last forever, but I know it's really tough to go through it. And trust me, I'm going through it right now as well. So you're not alone. I am here if you need someone to chat to and you feel like you don't have anyone. My DMs on Instagram are always open or comment down below if you want, but DMs are private messages on Instagram. And I'm always there to chat with you if you just need someone to listen or rant to, or if you need some type of advice, if it's anything I can help you with, let me know. And I'm happy to be there because like I said, you aren't alone and it's okay to ask for help and support. I hope this gave you some ideas to bring some positivity and motivation to your journey in motherhood. And if you're not feeling great for the day, that's fine. You don't have to be positive and motivated every day. If you need a day to sit down, drink a coffee, and just go on your phone, that's okay. If you need a day to lounge around in your underwear and your mom bun, I do that every day. That's okay. <laughs> it's fine. You are an amazing mom no matter what. You are so loved. You are the perfect mom that your kids need. And I just wanted to say that don't let that mom guilt creep in on you and make you believe all of those crazy things because you are enough. You are amazing and you've got this. So I will see you all in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now, friends.